Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 11 of the chapter Thermodynamics. In this video, I'm going to tell you about intensive and extensive properties. Let us start with the extensive properties first. Extensive property and extensive property may be defined as a property whose value depends on the quantity or the amount or size of matter which is present in the system. For example, mass, volume, internal energy, enthalpy, heat capacity, surface area, entropy and free energy. Let us just discuss this and understand this. Extensive properties are those properties that depend on the quantity of the substance present. Now, for example, mass. I have a lot of substance in me. Therefore, my mass is high. And uh, someone who has nothing in him, no fat, nothing, is like a skeleton. Obviously, his mass is less. So, what about volume? Again, I have a lot of matter in me. So, my volume, I occupy more volume. And someone who again has no matter, is a skeleton, is hardly occupying any space. So, volume also depends on the, on the amount of substance that is present in present or the quantity of the substance that is present. Internal energy. I ate two parathas. My internal energy is pretty high. Imagine someone who just had a glass of water. Obviously, I have much more internal energy than someone who had just a glass of water. So, jokes apart, these are properties that depend on the amount of substance which is present. If the substance present is more, the magnitude of this property goes up. If the substance is less, the magnitude of these properties goes down. Let us understand the other properties now. Enthalpy, we know, is the heat content. Heat capacity is the topic that we are going to do next. The next video is going to be on heat capacity and molar heat capacity, which you would understand soon. Surface area, you already know what it is. Entropy, I told you, is the degree of chaos or the measure of chaos. This also we will be doing in a later video. And free energy is the amount of energy that is available for work. Now, whatever the internal energy of a system is, all of it cannot be used to do work. Some of it is, is unavailable for work and the rest which remains can be used for work. Therefore, we say that is the energy that is free. So it is free to be utilized wherever you can use it for work. For example, if you know the human body, we have energy, but some of the energy is reserved to run the body, to make your heart beat, to carry out all your processes, to have energy for breathing. So that amount of energy is not available for work because that is the amount of energy that is required to maintain the system. After that, whatever extra energy is present, that is the one that you will be using to do work. So we'd say that is the amount of energy that is free. So that is my free energy, although my internal energy was much more, but some of it is, is not free to be used for work, only the free energy. So it is the net amount of energy that anything has, a system has, which can be used to carry out work. So we, what do we understand from this? Extensive properties are those properties which depend on the quantity of a substance. And intensive obviously are the opposite. These are those properties that do not depend on the quantity of the substance. So those properties which do not depend on the quantity or size of matter present are known as intensive properties. For example, temperature, now, is the temperature of one arm different from the temperature of the other arm? And is the temperature of my head different from the temperature of my foot? Temperature, again, does not depend on how much the body weighs. Okay, my arm weighs more, so its temperature is more. And my foot weighs less, therefore its uh, temperature is less. So it does, it does not depend on the quantity of the substance. So whether it's temperature, density again, density is mass per unit volume. If you take, let us say, the density of water is one gram per centimeter cube, right? If you take four centimeter cube of water, what will happen? You will get four grams. The, it would weigh four grams. But then if you have to calculate the density, what will you do? You will say it is four grams of water divided by how many centimeter cubes? Four. So ultimately you get the same density that is one gram per centimeter cube because 4 by 4 is 1. So density 
you may have taken whatever quantity ultimately this quantity comes down does not depend on the uh, on the amount or amount of the substance that you have taken this is constant irrespective of the amount similarly you have pressure you have viscosity you have surface tension and we've done viscosity pressure we've done it in states of matter surface tension also and specific heat capacity is again related to heat capacity which is going to be the topic of our next video so what did we understand from this extensive properties are those that depend on the amount of substance and intensive properties are those that do not depend on the amount of substance now let us take an example we have this box and in this box we have air so I just made this out for you. So this is a box that I have. It's a cuboidal box. And inside this box is, a, <coughs> is air. Okay. It has air and I see the air now. Now the volume of the air present inside this or the gas that I took inside the box is fixed. Do you see? Whatever the volume is, let us say that volume is V. It's the total volume. And the temperature of the air inside this box can be measured. So whatever the temperature is, we measure the temperature and we measure the volume. Now what do we do? We take a wall and we divide the chamber, this entire box into two different chambers. So I made this cut out for you. Look at this. Now this is our box and the front has been cut out just to show you what happens. And I put a wall in the middle. If I put a wall in the middle, now what has what is happening here? The volume of the box has been divided. Now we have two volumes. The volume of this half is V upon 2 if V was the initial volume of the entire box. And the volume of this half is also V by 2. Right? But what about the temperature of the gas now in both the chambers? If you take a thermometer, put it in this chamber and take a thermometer, put it in this chamber and you measure, the temperature would still be the same. But the volume has become half. So what do you understand from this? That volume is a property that depends on the quantity. It depended on how much space was present. So it depended on the amount of substance. So volume is an extensive property. While temperature did not depend on how much of space was available to the gas. It, only, it was a property that was intensive. It was independent of the amount of matter present. Now let us take an example. We have mass and we want to find out the molar mass of a substance. Whatever mass is given to you, if you divide it by the number of moles, you will get the mass for one mole of the substance, right? That is known as the molar mass. For example, you have uh, 64 grams of oxygen molecules and uh, you want to find out how many, oh, what is the molar mass of this? So 64 divided by 2 because this is 2 moles. If you divide it by 2, you will get the molar mass of oxygen. That is for if this is the mass of 2 moles, what will be the mass of 1 mole? The mass of 1 mole will be 32 grams. So now whether you take uh, 10 moles of oxygen or you take 5 moles, the molar mass, that is the mass of 1 mole will remain the same, that is 32. So what do we understand from this? That if you have an extensive, mass was an extensive property, it depended on the quantity of the substance. But when we try to find out the mass and specify it to 1 mole, or we were talking of a molar mass, when we were specifying the number, the extensive property turned into an intensive property, right? Now the molar mass, that is the mass of one mole of oxygen, whether you take how many moles, it doesn't matter. The mass of one mole is constant. So the mass now no longer depends on whatever quantity you take. So an extensive property turns into an intensive property if you divide it by a fixed number. So we say a molar property, any property, extensive property, is the value of that extensive property x. The x was the extensive property like we took mass. Divided by, for one mole of the substance, when you divide it by the number, now xm is the molar um, quantity of whatever extensive property that we took. In this case, we took mass. So molar mass would be equal to the mass divided by the number of moles. So the property which was x was extensive, and n was the number of moles. By dividing it by a fixed number, we have now turned it into an intensive property. Another example, 
here would be molar volume you take total volume what is the volume of one mole you remember when we was talking of when we talked of the states of matter and we said for an ideal gas uh, under stp every gas occupies one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters of space so what does that mean that is the molar volume of a of an ideal gas and that again is volume was extensive but when we talk of molar volume it became intense similarly heat capacity if you're talking of one mole molar heat capacity heat capacity was extensive but molar heat capacity or specific heat capacity it becomes an intensive property another property here which i've already explained to you is density density how do you define density it is mass upon volume mass per unit volume is known as density and we know that mass and volume both are extensive properties which means that both of them depend on the quantity of the substance but when you divide an extensive property by an extensive property you get density and what is density it's an intensive property so when you divide an extensive property by a specific number you get an intensive property when you divide an extensive property by another extensive property you get an intensive property this is what we conclude from these examples another thing mole fraction what is mole fraction it is the number of moles of one component divided by the total number of moles of different components present in a mixture so now you have you want to find out the mole fraction of a gas a so you have number of moles of a divided by number of moles of a plus number of moles of the other gas b so the total number of moles more number of moles of one constituent divided by the total number of moles of all the components of the mixture so number of moles would be extensive because it is it depends on the amount of substance number of moles of the different components is also extensive but mole fraction now extensive upon extensive mole fraction would become intensive why because once you know the mole fraction that if you have 100 grams these this is the percentage or this is the fraction of it that is going to be a uh, calculate mass percentage or mole fraction uh, this is the amount or this is the fraction uh, out of one whole which is going to be um, uh, which is the mole fraction of that particular substance so whether you take a uh, one a, a unit quantity of it or you take any quantity the mole fraction the fraction would always remain constant therefore it turns into an intensive property similarly you have force what is force force is mass into acceleration so mass what is mass mass is extensive and what is acceleration acceleration is velocity per unit time so velocity upon time both velocity and time do not depend on the quantity of a substance velocity is speed in a certain direction and time of course does not depend on uh, on anything i think it doesn't depend on matter so velocity upon time both are intensive while mass is extensive so what do we derive from this force on the other hand is extensive it depends on the amount of substance how much force a small object can exert and how much force the same the object which is made up of the same thing but it is it has much more quantity obviously that will have more force so we'll say force is extensive so what do we understand from this when you have an extensive property and you multiply it with an intensive and divide it by an intensive extensive divided by intensive or multiplied by intensive would still remain extensive so these were intensive and extensive properties if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now